Welcome to my channel. Please don't forget to subscribe and like the video. I'm excited to announce that my Patreon is finally live and now you can enjoy exclusive content before it's released on YouTube for just $2 a month. You can find the link in the description or comments. As always, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. The New Guardian, Part 2. Your opponent will be. The master did not have time to finish, when lightning struck in the clearing and a silhouette appeared. Lexus, the old man finished his sentence. Pav Makarov. After the boy I brought to the guild left, my grandson Lexus came up to me and said that he himself wanted to test the strength of the new guy. I refused, but he said that everything would be fine and nothing would happen to the boy. I asked why he was so eager to fight the kid, and he replied that he was interested in Naruto. After thinking a little, I gave the go-ahead for Lexus to become Naruto's opponent at tomorrow's test, but I also asked my grandson to keep himself under control. The next morning, Naruto came to the guild and we headed to the test site together. Arriving there, I looked around the clearing and realized that almost the entire guild had gathered there. Naruto, who also looked at the number of arrivals, asked who his opponent would be. Taking him to the center, I began to announce who Naruto's opponent would be, but before I could finish speaking, lightning thundered in the clearing and Lexus appeared. Then I finally finished the sentence. End of Makarov's Pav. After the master announced the boy's opponent, silence reigned in the clearing, and then a hubbub was heard. There were shouts that Lexus should not be pitted against newcomers, but Makarov informed everyone that nothing would happen to the newcomer, and if Lexus tried to cause serious harm to the boy, he would will stop. Pav Lexus today, as usual, I came to the guild after a task, but the old man was not in the guild and they told me that he is at a meeting of guild masters and should be back soon. I decided to wait. About three hours after I arrived, my old man came, but in the guild it was crazy that tables and chairs were flying everywhere. Some guy came in behind the grandfather, but as soon as he entered the table flew into him. I thought that he would be pinned right now, since he definitely didn't have time to dodge, but what he did next even surprised and amused me a little. Namely, he raised his hand, sticking out his finger, and when the table flew up to him, he simply touched it. The table just hung in the air. I realized that he was using gravity magic, then the old man began to scold everyone for the bedlam he had created, but I kept an eye on this guy. As it turned out, I was right. This boy sent this poor table to the return address. The furniture hovered over the pink-haired boy named Natsu. The one that was flying towards him bent over the table, thinking that it would fly past, but as soon as he relaxed, this piece of furniture fell on him, thereby pinning him to the floor. After that, the newly arrived boy introduced himself. Uzumaki Naruto, I remember. Afterwards, Natsu shouted something about, let's get rid of the white one, but I didn't pay attention to it. The old man took the new guy away to put a mark. When they finished with this matter and Naruto walked towards the bar counter, Natsu flew at him with his fist engulfed in flames. The ash-haired one just grinned and began to strike, while some kind of golden glow enveloped his hand. Naruto struck Natsu's fist and they both shouted something about dragon fists, but what interested me most was that when the energies touched, the fire on the pink-haired fist went out, and he himself went into the wall. Afterwards, a dark-haired boy named Grey approached him and started a conversation. Then Natsu joined them. But then the boy's grandfather called and, as I understood, he was talking about checking for wizard class. After waiting for the boy to leave, I approached the old man and asked him to fight this boy at tomorrow's test. At first he refused me, but after I assured my grandfather that I would keep myself under control, he agreed. The next morning, I appeared in the clearing where the test was being held, exactly at the appointed time, and there I saw that the master and Naruto had already arrived. Grandfather, declaring me an opponent of Naruto, began to calm the raging people. End of Lexus Pav. Naruto, Lexus. Get started. The master said, placing a barrier over the clearing. Let's meet Naruto, my name is Lexus. Lexus introduced himself, I want to fight with you because you interested me very much. I feel just colossal energy in you, it is equal to the energy of God's chosen ones, said the wizard. I'm very pleased to meet you and I won't hide from you that I also wanted to fight with you, Naruto answered. Okay. Let's start the fight, Lexus said as he disappeared and reappeared in front of Naruto. Naruto, seeing that the enemy had disappeared, 
prepared to teleport and at the moment when Lexus appeared in front of him, with his fist raised to strike, he disappeared. Lexus was a little confused by the sudden disappearance of the boy, but feeling that the boy's energy was now behind him, he threw lightning there. Naruto prepared for Lexus's next attack, and seeing what the enemy threw at him ball lightning, grinned. When the lightning flew up to the boy, he simply ate it, which surprised both Lexus and the master. Lexus, seeing that his lightning had simply been eaten, began to think through a strategy. The boy, taking advantage of the enemy's confusion, launched an attack. Naruto slammed his fists against each other and said, Roar of the Royal Dragon, and a column of golden energy flew towards Lexus. Lexus dodged this stream and decided not to attack from a distance with lightning anymore. After the roar, Naruto wanted to conjure the dragon's wings, but Lexus, who began to attack again, did not allow this. Naruto also noticed that Lexus was not going to attack from a distance, which meant that Naruto's chances of winning were greatly reduced. After missing a couple of blows, Naruto flew several meters away. Crap. What to do? I'm worse at close combat than he is. Naruto thought, but then he remembered something. Karama. How can I deal with it? Naruto asked his guardian. Try, just like your opponent, to concentrate the lightning energy in your body, and also concentrate the magic of gravity in your fists. Then you will at least become equal in close combat. Karama gave advice. Thanks for the advice Ku. The fox thanked Naruto, doing everything as Karama said. Contact me. Answered the keeper. I'm lucky that he's not so strong in close combat, otherwise I would have had a hard time. Lexus thought looking at Naruto, but suddenly the boy disappeared and appeared in front of him and dealt a rather weak blow. Lexus wanted to dodge, but it was as if he was being pulled towards Naruto's fist. Realizing that the guy began to use gravity, Lexus had no choice but to break the distance. So now all I have to do is engage him in close combat without interrupting him and then, most likely, there will be a draw. Naruto thought. And this guy is smart to make such a cunning move. Lexus thought. Meanwhile, outside the barrier, everyone was placing bets and marveling at the boy's strength. Most bet on Lexus, and a few people bet on Naruto. For some reason the master bet on a draw. But let's return to our soldiers. Lexus and Naruto had been engaged in close combat for about two minutes, and neither of them wanted to give up, although both were already quite beaten, but Naruto was luckier than Lexus since he was much shorter than Lexus. After 15 minutes of continuously beating each other, Naruto and Lexus fell. The master, seeing this, dispelled the barrier. I declare a draw, the master said to the guild members, and they supported him, but then there were shouts about the fact that they had lost. The master smiled, because his instinct did not let him down. After that, everyone began to disperse. Naruto's Pav. I woke up in a room with a white ceiling. He discovered that he was wrapped in some bandages. Everything hurt. I decided to ask Karama for help, otherwise in this state I wouldn't be able to cast a healing spell. No sooner said than done. I mentally turned to Karama and asked for help. After a couple of seconds, I am enveloped in a soft, healing, golden light. Having healed, I go to look for information about where I ended up. Leaving the room, I came across the master and Lexus. Their jaws dropped when I appeared. It certainly looked comical. End of Naruto's Pav. Naruto, Lexus, come to my office. Makarov said, moving away a little from shock. Makarov's Pav. After the fight, I picked up Lexus and Naruto and took them to the guild's medical unit. I left them in the care of Porlushka, who came at my request. Two hours later, Lexus came to my office. He told me very interesting news that in the battle with Naruto, he did not hold back at all, but this made me think specifically, but then I decided to ask Naruto where he got such strength, because it does not happen that a seven-year-old child so strong. Later, Lexus and I went to check on the boy, but what a surprise we were when an absolutely safe and sound Naruto came out to meet us. There was not a single scratch or abrasion on his body. Although before this I again felt the same strength that I felt when meeting the boy, but this time the boy's strength was also mixed in with it. I decided that I needed to find out everything and invited both of them to my office. End of Makarov's Pav. Okay master. Naruto answered, anticipating that there would be questions about his strength. As he walked, he thought about what to tell the master and what not. 
Entering the office, the master sat down at his desk and clasped his hands. Naruto and Lexus took the empty chairs. Well, what about Naruto, tell me, said the master. What should I tell you, master? Naruto decided to play the fool. Answer my questions. I am interested in who you are. Why do I feel powerful energy in you that does not belong to a person? The grandfather asked his questions. Lexus, who at first sat and made a brick face, also looked up at Naruto with an interested look. Okay, I'll answer. You want to know where a boy like me gets such great strength, right? Naruto gave up, but the master only nodded in response to the question asked. Okay, I'll tell you, but first, an all-consuming barrier. Naruto said, quickly creating a script. Here, now we can talk. I put a soundproof barrier on the room because what I am about to tell you must remain a secret. The boy answered the master's interested look. So, let's start with the one whose power you felt. Kurama come out. Naruto called his guardian. Immediately, the master and Lexus felt enormous power. Makarov immediately recognized her, since he had already felt her twice before. Well, what do you want Naruto? Asked the nine-tailed fox who appeared. Nothing Kurama. I just decided to introduce you to the master of the guild in which I am now a member, and you are the master and Lexus, meet my guardian Kurama, the nine-tailed fox. Naruto said pointing at the fox. Hello, said the fox. So, now about who I am and why I have such enormous power. Naruto said looking at the master. So, here I am a demigod, said Naruto, which shocked Lexus and Makarov a lot. That is, as a demigod? The old man asked dumbfounded. Well, I am a direct descendant of the goddess of death. In terms of my strength, this is only a tiny part of the strength that I possess, but, to my regret, it is still sealed. So I'm content with just its crumbs. Although these very little ones are equal in level to the strongest human wizards, I am also immortal. The restrictions on my basic strength will subside at 20 physical years, and until that moment I am the same person as you, perhaps with a slight difference it's impossible to kill me. Well, another difference is that I can use the weakest spells of the god of death. Naruto finally finished off the master and Lexus. What about your dragon slayer magic then? Asked the master. Well, everything is simple here. The goddess of death has little time and I could suffer from her enemies. So, that's why she hid me and gave me to be raised by one of the two royal dragons, which are considered the strongest among the other dragons. She expressed a desire for me to be raised as the guardian of this world. One of the royal dragons is Aknalohia, he is currently the king of all dragons, well, besides my teacher. So Aknalogia is very cruel and he would have raised me to be more of a destroyer of this world than a guardian, and the second dragon and my mentor is Belphegor. Belphegor is a wise and kind dragon. So Shinigami told him to raise me and teach me magic, that's all. Naruto answered. Thanks for your story. The still-stunned master thanked Naruto. But what should I do with you now? Asked the old man. And really what? Naruto also thought. You don't need to do anything with it. Said the fox. Let him live in peace and make friends. Anyway, until his 20th birthday, you don't have to think about it. Kurama explained. Well, then that's what we'll do. Said the old man. By the way, Naruto, Lexus. Here are your shares from the bets. Said the old man hinting that he had won everything. Um. Thanks grandpa, Naruto said. Yeah, thanks old man, Lexus, who had recovered from shock, supported him. Well, you can all be free, said the master and kicked the guys out of the office. Equals 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 chapter 5 equals 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 sorry for not posting products for so long. When Naruto left the office, he went down to the first floor. Approaching the bar, the boy ordered himself some orange juice and a cake. Finding an empty and full table, Naruto sat down at it and began to wait for the order. While he was lost in his thoughts, Mira approached him. Hello little white one. The girl shouted to Naruto, and then added, Well, why are you sitting here and being sad, and by the way, why did the master call you? She began to bombard the boy with questions from the world. So let's take it in order. Naruto stopped the flow of words. And I'm not white. I have a name. The boy began to be indignant. So what? Now you'll be little white, said Mira, and this is a very cute little nickname, 
The girl winked at him and wanted to say something else, but was interrupted by Elsa, who suddenly appeared. Well, are you flirting with someone again, Mira, the red-haired girl said sarcastically. But you're just a tin can, Mira said looking at Elsa. Don't you see that I'm meeting someone new here, the girl added. Ah. So that means you were talking to him, otherwise I already thought that you had started to seduce him, Elsa answered. Whoever said tin can, no guy will like you, with your fetish for iron. The white-haired one did not remain in debt. Well, now you'll get everything, slutty girl, Titania shouted and rushed at Mira. And Naruto at that moment was sitting and peacefully devouring the order he had just brought, namely a fruitcake, but the raging girls came too close to the boy and so he decided to calm them down before they accidentally hit him. Girls, calm down! Naruto shouted trying to stop the fight between Mira and Elsa. But the boy didn't know that they couldn't be stopped just like that, and during the next clash between the girls, they dropped the boy's cake right on his pants, and a glass of orange juice, which also flew up with the cake, fell right on the peacemaker's head. Elsa and Mira did not pay attention to this, but the rest of the guild saw a very evil aura around Naruto. The last straw was the table flying from the girl's side into the boy's. When the table just started to fly towards Naruto, it was torn to pieces by an invisible force, and a pressing force was felt in the guild. Well, stop the fight! The boy shouted and, strangely enough, it helped. The girls froze, as did Natsu and Grey, who were again sorting things out at the other end of the guild. Now girls, look what you did to me, Naruto said, seeing that the culprits were listening to him. The girls, seeing what happened to Naruto, wanted to laugh after their fight, but when they saw the boys look, they hung their heads. They said sorry synchronously, and one of those watching this scene even whistled like this was the first time in their memory when Elsa and Mira apologized to someone for this, and did not laugh. Look, this little grandpa was able to rein them in, said Lexus, who was descending along with the master. What's true is true, answered Makarov. At the same time, at the other end of the guild. Yes, Naruto is cool if he was able to pacify the fighting Elsa and Mira, Gray said. Yes, he's just something. He was able to calm these fear people. Now I want to brush him off even more, Natsu shouted and ran towards Naruto. Naruto. Swing with me, shouted the fiery dragon slayer, running up to the gray-haired man, but he did not take into account what mood Naruto was in now. Leave me alone. The gray-haired man said only one phrase and hit the pink-haired one with his fist. Natsu, not understanding what happened, broke through the wall. And Naruto went to the board with the tasks, tore off one piece of paper from there and said to the master. Master. Mark me for this task, Naruto asked. Okay, that's all the old man said. After answering, the boy turned around and walked towards the exit, glaring angrily at the silent Mira and Elsa. As soon as Naruto left the guild, discussions began about what he had seen. He is the first after the master who was able to stop them, Makao said. I agree with you, said Makao's bosom friend, Wakaba. And also a completely normal conversation ensued between Elsa and Mira. Mira, next time remind me not to anger this newbie, asked the future Titania. Fine. I would also be angry if they dropped a cake on me and my cake at the same time, said Mira. I would be angry too. Elsa agreed with her, at the same time in Naruto's apartment. Damn. I ate the cake, it's called, Naruto exclaimed as he stepped out of the shower. Suddenly he heard the fox's voice in his head. Ah, well, I took a nap, said the fox, but noticed the gloomy mood of the owner. Did something happen Naruto? Kurama asked. It happened, Naruto answered and began to retell everything that happened while the fox was sleeping. Ah ha ha The fox neighed. I don't think Kurama is funny, the boy said offendedly. Ah ha. Well, okay, what will we do next? The fox asked, calming down a little. We're going on a mission, Naruto answered, a little cheerier. Um, and which one? Asked Kurama. Now, the gray-haired man said and began to read the leaflet, and then smiled even wider. We must destroy a gang of robbers near the port of Hargonta. After finishing reading, Naruto answered, still smiling, but this smile looked like a grin. So there will be someone to unload on. The boy thought to himself and said out loud, I think we need to get ready, 
the boy said and went to pack his things for the road. At the station, Naruto bought tickets and began to wait for the train. When the boy entered the train, he immediately put a barrier on himself to prevent motion sickness, as he had already been taught by experience. He arrived without any incidents, except that the conductor pestered him with questions. Where are his parents? And why does such a little guy travel alone on the train and not sit at home? Etc. But the boy patiently answered them. Upon arriving in the city, Naruto went to see the mayor of Hargent, namely the mayor's office. Having reached the desired building, the boy went inside. In the mayor's reception room, he saw the secretary and approached her. Can I find out something? Naruto asked the girl. Yes. What did you want boy? Asked the secretary. Is the mayor at home? The boy asked the question directly. Why do you need a baby? The girl answered the question with a question. I'm talking about a mission about a gang of robbers, I'm from the fairy tale guild. Naruto answered. The girl looked at the boy skeptically, but when she saw the piece of paper with the task that the boy handed her, she answered. Yes, he's at home, the door is at the end of the corridor, said the secretary. Thank you, Naruto said and went to the indicated door. My pleasure, answered the smiling girl. Arriving at the office, Naruto knocked and entered. Hello, I am a wizard from the fairy tale guild, sent on a mission to eliminate robbers, said the boy, looking at the mayor. The mayor, in turn, looked at Naruto with an incredulous look and said. Boy, tell me, since when do guilds send children on such missions, who most likely do not know how to cast magic? Asked the mayor. Well, probably since then, when the child standing in front of you is equal in strength to an S-class magician. The boy said irritably, but his words stunned the mayor, who imagined how strong this boy was. Naruto, not allowing the man to leave, decided to move on to the conversation. So what about the task, Mr. Mayor? Asked the gray-haired man. Yes, now, the man came to his senses and began to talk about the essence of the task and where to find this gang. Okay, I'll take it, Naruto said and left the office. Naruto left the office and headed towards the city gates. According to the mayor, the bandit's hideout is located not far from the city. There are also magicians in this gang, and therefore ordinary city guards cannot capture them. Leaving the city, Naruto headed to the indicated location. When the boy finally arrived, he saw the cave, literally a second later, people began to come out of there, glamorously dressed. About. Look what a cute boy, shouted one, in a kind of sweet voice. Let's take him to us, said another man who was dressed, in a dress. Yes, let's do it, the others started shouting. He's so cute, the men continued to shout. This made Naruto's eye twitch, he began to suspect who these people were, but to be sure, he asked Kurama. Kurama can you tell me what they are? Naruto asked the fox. Yes. Little one, you're in trouble, these people, in addition to being gays, are also pedophiles, Kurama answered, and Naruto's eyes became five cents. What? He shouted. At the same time, the leader apparently came out of the shelter. He was wearing a skirt, top, stockings, etc. Sorry, but there's simply not enough imagination to describe such a pervert, and what he said completely finished off Naruto. Boy, don't you want to have some fun with us? Asked the leader. Yes, 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 the other robbers shouted. After that, Naruto's cup of anger was overflowing, and a dark aura began to thicken around him. His eyes began to transform, they became like this, black whites and a completely white iris without a pupil, and on it there was a pattern in the form of crossed braids. A chilling wind also blew from him, which chilled to the bones. Oh, it looks like we angered the sweetie. One of the bandits shouted and this served as a death sentence for them. Naruto pressed down on them using gravity magic, preventing anyone from moving, and then, taking a deep breath into his lungs, he shouted. Roar of the royal dragon. The boy shouted and after that all the bandits were defeated. Next, Naruto used one writing spell and sealed the criminals in a special stone. Well, Kurama, I think we need to go and hand over these perverts, the boy said to the fox. Yeah, the fox answered. Arriving in the city, Naruto went to prison, where he handed over the perverted bandits. Having received the award, the boy went to Magnolia, taking the train. Arriving in the city, Naruto went to the guild. 
When the boy just opened the door to the room, he was greeted by a fight in the guild and a table flying towards him. Crap. What a day is today. The boy shouted after tilting the table. Equals 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 chapter 6 equals 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 3 years later. 3 years have already passed since Naruto joined the fairy tale guild. Morning in the boy's apartment. Wow, said the boy stretching. Looking at the calendar and seeing that it was the 8th of October, the boy said. Tomorrow is my birthday, we need to celebrate, the boy said to himself and began to get ready for the guild. Arriving at the guild, the boy ordered breakfast. Over the past three years, Naruto managed to meet everyone in this eccentric place, and also made friends with everyone. It was not possible to become friends only with Lexus. He, Lexus, gradually began to shun others and a month ago created his own personal guard, which he called, Thunderbolts, because he mainly used lightning magic. The Thunderbolts guard included three magicians a year younger than Lexus. Their names were. Fried, Herringbone and Bucklow. Freed is a master of letters, but in them he was weaker than Naruto, and also has, in general like the other Thunderbolts, additional, auxiliary, magic in his eyes. The Christmas tree mainly used her power in her eyes, and her power was as follows. Under the conditions, if a person looks into her eyes, he turns into stone. Bucklow, on the other hand, has the power to see the souls of living beings and control them in objects, and with the help of magic in his eyes he can make, with eye contact, a doll out of a person. Naruto had very good relations with the Thunderers, and they were especially friendly with Freed as they exchanged experiences in this area of magic and often the master of writing learned some spells from Naruto. The guild became very attached to the boy, and Natsu changed his target from guild arts to Naruto and now, when he saw him, he flew at the gray-haired man screaming for Naruto to get away with him. Gildarts, in turn, was even very happy, because the small pink-haired dragon had finally gotten rid of him. He got along the same way with Naruto relationship as with Natsu, or rather, he began to treat him as his own son. Mira and Elsa, after that incident with the evil Naruto, behaved more calmly in the presence of the above-mentioned. So now the boy did not have to fear that something would be thrown at him again, these two girls in the heat of a showdown. After breakfast, Naruto decided to chat with Gildarts, or rather, dare him to tell him some stories. But the boy was not destined to make it as a pink-haired miracle jumped at him with a war cry. Natsu punched Naruto in the head and said with a smug smile. Naruto. Let's go brush it off, Natsu shouted, seeing how he was rising from the floor and rubbing his gray hair on his bump. Boy. Well, okay Natsu. Let's go out. I'm in just the right mood, Naruto said with such a smile that Natsu felt uneasy, and the next moment the pink-haired one flew out of the guild with great acceleration through a blow from Naruto. Naruto followed Natsu out of the guild. Mira, Elsa and Grey also followed him. The latter went only for the reason to see how his rival friend was raking. When Naruto and Natsu entered the clearing assigned to their guild as a training ground, the pink-haired boy lunged at his opponent. At the same time, he shouted that he would kill Naruto with one blow, but as they say, luck turned its back on Natsu, and the very first attack failed, namely, the pink-haired man went to an unscheduled meeting with a tree. But the boy doesn't despaired and rushed at Naruto again and again. The fire dragon slayer even used the roar of the fire dragon, but it didn't help either, since the fire flowed from Naruto like water and did not cause any damage. By the end of the fight, Natsu managed to say hello to every tree in this clearing and he also became very close friends with the land and the grass in the same clearing. In the end, he passed out lying on the ground and Naruto had to drag Natsu to the guild on himself, and behind him were the observers of the show, which was called, Natsu Snatches or Beating a Baby. At the guild, Naruto put Natsu on a bench while he went to get some water. Having found the desired liquid, the boy poured it into a glass and returned back to the fiery dragon. Naruto walked up to Natsu and poured the contents of the glass on his face. Natsu jumped up as if scalded, focusing his gaze on who became the author of such an original wake-up call, the pink-haired one exclaimed. Why did I lose again? Natsu started shouting. Not again, but again, Naruto said calmly. Naruto, I'll definitely defeat you, I'll run, in short, I'll kill you someday, the fiery dragon slayer shouted and ran towards the exit. Yes, yes, was all Naruto said, Natsu's pav. This morning, as usual, I came to the guild, 
and later the one I dream of defeating someday came to it. As usual, I attacked Naruto with my fists after he ate, otherwise even Elsa and Mira don't fight in his presence. I hit this white guy on the head and said. Naruto let's go, let's brush it off. As he stood up, he said that he didn't mind, and he finished the end of the sentence by turning his face to me and he smiled so much that I became scared, even Mira and Elsa don't know how to scare me like that. After he told me this, I flew out of the guild from Naruto's blow. Arriving at the clearing, or rather the guild's training ground, I began to attack him, but after the first attack I flew into a tree from a weak blow from Naruto. This went on for quite a long time. I even managed to use Fire Dragon's roar, but as soon as the spell hit Naruto, it flowed over him. At the end of our fight, I passed out. I woke up when I was already in the guild, from water that got on my face. Again I started the speech on the topic. I will surpass you Naruto, etc., and ran away into the forest. In the forest, I beat Naruto's portrait, for two hours, saying that someday I will defeat him, but remembering that I still cannot defeat Mira and Elsa, I became even more angry. Naruto is two years older than me, like Mira and Elsa, and has already fought Lexus on equal terms. But this was when Naruto was seven, and strength grows with age, I think that in these three years he has almost reached the level of Gildarts, although I may be exaggerating. Having broken one tree, I moved on to another. After hitting the tree twice with my fist, something very strong and heavy fell on my head. This something turned out to be an egg. Looking at its coloring, I thought it was a dragon's egg. Getting up, I rushed to the guild, because I had to tell everyone about my find. End of Natsu's Pav. I found a dragon egg. Natsu shouted as he ran into the guild. Dragon egg, you're kidding me, a commotion began in the guild. Natsu. Why are you so sure that this is a dragon egg? Asked the master. Grandpa. Everything is simple here, you see this drawing, it looks like a dragon's paw. Natsu shouted. Natsu. This egg may not be a dragon egg, but where did you find it? Naruto approached as he asked. In the forest, the pink-haired one answered briefly. Grandpa, do the magic so that a baby dragon appears from this egg. Natsu, there is no such spell in this world that would give birth to new life, the master put forward the phrase. I don't understand anything, so can you or not? Asked the curious dragon. No I cannot, it should hatch on its own, said Makarov. Ha 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 the firebrand will hatch the egg, Gray shouted, laughing. Shut up, little ice in your panties, Natsu answered. Well, Grandpa, how can I raise him? Asked Natsu. You have to keep it warm. Before the old man could finish, Natsu covered his hands in fire. You say it's heated, now we'll heat it up. Natsu shouted and began to envelop the egg in fire, but this was not destined to happen, as he was hit on the head, and the egg was taken away. Natsu wanted to be indignant, but came across Naruto's disapproving gaze. Natsu can't do that, said a voice from the side. The pink-haired man turned to see Lisanna holding an egg. Why can't it be, Grandpa said. Keep it warm, Natsu began to be indignant, but Naruto butted into the conversation. Natsu, as always, you didn't listen to the master, but he meant that you need to keep the egg warm, said the grey-haired man. I see, but how to do this? asked the pink-haired one. I'll help you, Natsu. Let's grow this egg together, Lisanna said. Come on. Natsu was happy. I'll help you too, I'm interested in what will grow from this egg, Naruto said. Let's first find some place for shelter, Lisanna said, heading with the boys towards the exit of the guild. Agas, I saw a very nice clearing in the forest, it's near the mountains, you can build a shelter there for the future dragon, said Natsu. If so, led Natsu, said the grey-haired man, Yujis. The pink-haired one answered and led the guys towards the named clearing. Natsu led Naruto and Lisanna to the clearing he was talking about. It offered a very beautiful view, and in the evening you could watch a beautiful sunset there. It's a beautiful place, let's build a shelter for the egg here, Lisanna said. Now I'll do everything. Natsu shouted and threw a bunch of stones, which collapsed after a couple of seconds. No, Natsu. Such a shelter will definitely not suit us, the girl said. Well, now it's my turn. Naruto shouted and began to concentrate the magical power for the spell. Gravitational field. Attraction. 
The gray-haired man said the spell, and a dome of stones attracted by gravity began to form around him. Before the eyes of Natsu and Lisana, a stone dome formed, and from there, breaking a hole, Naruto came out, but since the integrity of the dome was broken and no more magic could hold it, he simply took it and collapsed. Lisana shook her head again, making it clear that that wouldn't do either. Well, now me. Said the girl and using magic she turned into a huge rabbit. In her bunny form, Lisana quickly made a suitable shelter. All the boys had to do was bring the egg inside. In the house that Lisana had built, three children were sitting and talking. Tell me Naruto, do you have a girlfriend? Lisana asked. Why such questions? Naruto asked, and Natsu just muttered under his breath. Precocious, damn it, the pink-haired man muttered to himself. So you didn't answer the question, the girl pouted. I don't have a girlfriend, but I have one that I like. Naruto answered honestly. Thank you for your answer, Lisana smiled slyly. Naruto couldn't sleep that night, so he sat near the shelter and looked at the moon. Karama. How do you like tonight? Naruto asked the emerging fox. The stars and the moon are beautiful today, aren't they? Karama asked. I agree with you, buddy. Naruto answered. After sitting there for half an hour, the boy felt that someone was walking towards this place. Karama, someone is approaching so you need to hide, Naruto said. Okay, answered the boy's guardian, the one Naruto sensed was Elfman. Hello Elfman, why did you come? Asked Naruto. I thought maybe the egg was cold, so I wanted to take it home for the night, answered Lisana's brother. I see, but I think this won't be necessary, I put writing on this place, so it's not cold there, said the gray-haired man. I see, but anyway, here are some blankets for you, cover the others with them, Elfman said, handing Naruto several blankets. Thank you, the boy answered Elfman. You're welcome, bye, Lisana's brother said and left. While Naruto said goodbye, morning, 9th of October. Naruto opened his eyes, he didn't notice how he fell asleep yesterday. In the shelter, Natsu and Lisana woke up, and also crawled out of it, still sleepy. Natsu, Lisana, let's go to the guild and have breakfast. Naruto said and walked in the direction of the guild, fortunately it was not far from this place, and Natsu and the egg, as well as a sleepy Lisana, trailed behind him. Walking through the forest, Naruto wanted to ask the guys something, but when he turned around, they were gone. The boy became worried, because in this forest there were, forest volcanoes. Forest volcanoes are two meter tall monsters that have the magic of absorption, and for two eight year old children, even one volcano is already bad. Naruto rushed to look for these two, namely Natsu and Lisana. As an A class magician, volcanoes were not scary to him, but if anything happened, Kurama would help. Naruto found the lost guys in a clearing that was nearby. He really didn't like what the boy saw and rushed to the rescue. And in the clearing at that time, the following events unfolded. What a big egg. Give it to me, people, said the healthy Vulcan. Go to hell, you devil, Natsu exploded. Hold Lisana's egg, the pink-haired one said and rushed at the enemy, but it didn't bring much benefit. Vulcan sent Natsu flying into a tree with a blow of his paw. Oh, you bastard. In the literal sense of the word, Natsu caught fire and hit the monster with his fist, which was engulfed in flames, but the attack only pushed the monster back a few steps. The monster was about to hit back, but Natsu was surrounded by an invisible protective field, so the blow did not reach him. Vulcan, you have fallen so low that you are already attacking children, a voice asked the stunned monster, and Natsu recognized it as his voice. Naruto, why did you get in? I would have done it myself, Natsu shouted. Yes yes. I believe you, because while I was running, I saw the battle. Naruto said sarcastically, and the next moment he found himself in front of the stunned Vulcan and delivered a powerful blow. You won't live, man. The monster shouted and rushed at Naruto, but literally a minute later he was defeated. Well, let's go to the guild, Naruto said as if nothing had happened. And at this time in the guild, the master was sitting and drinking beer, but suddenly he felt a tremendous strength that a person cannot have and tensed up as the source of this force approached guilds. Other magicians did not feel it, except for Gildarts and Lexus. When the source came close to the guild, the master prepared for battle, 
although he understood that there was no point in fighting such a thing. And here, at the gates of the guild, was a young-looking, ash-haired girl, who at most could have been twenty years old. She approached the master without taking any hostile actions, while the rest of the guild watched her in fascination. Can you tell me if Uzumaki Naruto is here? The girl asked. He is not there at the moment, but he will come soon. May I ask why you need it? Asked Makarov. Of course, I came to congratulate him on his birthday, the girl answered. Why, isn't it Naruto's birthday today, but today is definitely the 9th of October. There was a noise in the guild and everyone began to prepare for a drinking party, a friend's birthday, after all. Yes, today is his birthday, the girl confirmed her own words. Can I ask you who you were related to? The master asked again, hoping for an answer. I'm his grandmother. After this phrase, everyone froze and fainted. What's wrong with them? That grandmother was sincerely surprised. When everyone came to their senses a little, Naruto and company burst into the guild, with Natsu's signature cry. Well, we didn't expect it. Natsu shouted, but when he saw that they weren't paying attention to him, he asked. Why is this happening? Asked Natsu. Yes, his grandmother showed up to Naruto, Gray said, and Naruto, hearing this word, began to feverishly think through ways of retreat, but did not have time because he was picked up by his grandmother. So you're caught, aren't you happy to see your granny? The girl asked, and everyone who came to their senses began to watch with interest the unfolding scene. Grandma, please let me go, Naruto began to beg. Well, no, your grandmother was able to get away from work for the first time in four years, and you say, let him go, said the girl. Well, please, the boy asked and made eyes like those of the cat from Shrek. Okay. I came to congratulate you. Gifts in this package. The girl said and began to take out gifts. So. 1. A sword whose blade consists of pure magic and can turn into a ring, 2. Scrolls with descriptions of spells. Well, that's all, but I almost forgot, I will increase the energy of your guardian. The girl announced the list. Thank you grandma, I take it it's time for you to go? Naruto asked, hugging the girl. Yeah, I can't stay here long, bye. The girl said and disappeared. Bye, Naruto said. Naruto. That was who I was thinking about. The master asked quietly. Yes, it was her, the boy answered. Well, then there was a celebration in the style of fairy tale. After three days, Naruto, Natsu and Lisana, as usual, came to the guild for breakfast, but this time it was not possible to have a peaceful breakfast as the egg began to knock suspiciously, and exactly a second later a blue, winged cat. After making a couple of circles over the pink-haired boy, the cat landed in Natsu's arms. A crowd gathered around Natsu, because no one expected a winged cat to hatch from an egg, and Lisana said. Just blue happiness with wings, said the girl. Happiness, so it's not our way to call him happy, said Natsu. Equals 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 chapter 7 equals 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 the next day. The next day, Naruto decided to look at the gifts left to him by his grandmother, or rather the goddess of death. The boy decided to look through the manuscripts first. The first scroll described how to learn to control your god power, or, to be more precise, a small part of it, just as Naruto had this unbridled energy. In the second there were several spells, for the deity they were very weak, but for any person they were unattainable, unless the first four of ten chosen by god could be content with one-tenth of the power of such a spell. The first was a blessing that any god or demigod, but necessarily having the awakened blood of his ancestor and having the same strength and volume of magical energy, could bestow on a person and he, the person, receives longevity or a similar bun. The second was a spell that helps keep the soul in the world of the living or revive a person, but this is only possible if you have the remains or body of the deceased. Well, as well as several combat spells. In the third manuscript, Naruto found a detailed description of the sword that the goddess of death gave him. The name of this sword is, Morton, its properties are as follows. The first property is that the sword, at the request of the owner, can change shape and length. The second property of Morton is that he can cut anything, and he cannot be blunted. Third, at the request of the owner, the blade of the sword can disappear, and the hilt can turn into a ring. This sword can also be divided into two one-handed swords. The manuscript was no longer readable due to damage. 
After Naruto read all the manuscripts he decided to move on to the sword. The sword was very beautiful. He had a blade as black as night and a guard of the same color. A red line crossed the blade in the middle. The handle was silver in color, with a ruby inserted at its end. It's beautiful, of course, but I don't know how to handle a sword, Naruto said sadly. Yes. This sword is truly beautiful, and I'll teach you how to use a sword, Kurama said to the boy. How are you going to teach me how to use a sword if you yourself are a fox? Asked with skepticism boy. You know that I am very old, right? The fox asked, to which the boy nodded. So, I lived in a different world, unlike this one. It was a world of assassins hidden in the shadows or as they called themselves, shinobi. Now, among the shinobi there were those who were good at wielding swords, and there was even an entire country that specialized in wielding a sword. By the way, it was in this world that you were born. On your birthday, a man subjugated me and forced an attack on one of the strongest shinobi villages. But the path to complete destruction was blocked by your father. He was the head of that very village and also the strongest in it. Your father called your grandmother to seal me. He noticed that I was under control and decided to seal me in his own son, that is, in you. But your mother came running to the battlefield and made a deal with the goddess. Afterwards, the person who subdued me forced me to kill you to prevent the sealing. I struck, but your parents covered you, and then the unexpected happened. Naruto, you began to exude power similar to that of a Shinigami, we were all dumbfounded. Then your grandmother decided to seal the souls of your parents, along with me, in you and take them with her. As it turned out later, you are her direct descendant. She saved me from my dark side, which always prevented me from living. After that, the Shinigami went to this world and handed you over to the care of Belphegor. Initially, the Shinigami wanted to keep you with her, but there are also all sorts of intrigues among the gods, and therefore, you could be in danger and she decided to hide you in this world. Phew. That's the whole story, but I seem to have gone off topic. So, in that world I saw many swordsmen and remembered all their styles, as well as techniques. Now it won't be difficult for me to recreate all their techniques, as well as teach them to you. The fox finished his story. I see. Let's first stop by the guild and have breakfast, and then let's go train me in fencing, Naruto put forward his proposal. I agree, Kurama answered briefly. Arriving at the guild, Naruto ordered breakfast and waited for his order to arrive. After eating, the boy wanted to go to the exit, but Natsu, who was with his cat, ran into him. Naruto, where are you going? Asked Natsu, who had a plan in his head on how to get Naruto. Hum. I went to train. Answered honestly boy. Then, let's brush it off, because fighting is the best training. The pink-haired one shouted. I agree with you, Firebrand, but don't you know that Naruto won't fight you at full strength? Grey asked Natsu as he intervened. What did the frostbitten one say? Yes, I will kill him with one blow. Natsu shouted. Duh, duh. Natsu will kill Naruto with one hit. The flying cat, who, as usual, was on the side of the fiery dragon slayer, rejoiced. Yeah, of course. Grey chuckled, which infuriated Natsu. If you don't believe it, look. The pink-haired one shouted and rushed at Naruto with his fists, but was sent into the wall by Naruto himself. Natsu. The cat flew towards his friend. That's not all, exclaimed Natsu, who crawled out of the wall. Natsu, you can't beat Naruto, wow. Grey yawned loudly and fell to the floor, and Natsu, who again rushed towards Naruto, smacked his face on the floor. What's wrong with them? The boy asked, to himself, but noticing a figure entering the guild, he tensed. Who are you? Naruto asked loudly. Oh, so my magic doesn't work on you, interesting. The figure said thoughtfully, looking at the grey-haired boy. You did not answer the question. The boy said threateningly and began to release magical power, which rather stunned the man standing opposite him. Naruto, calm down, he is a mage of our guild. His name is Glitch Eyes. You never crossed paths with him because he came when you were on missions, and he is one of our S-class magicians. The master reassured the boy. Okay then, otherwise I thought he was an enemy, Naruto said, calming down. How? How can a child have such strength at such an age? Buggy eyes began to mutter to himself. Okay, let's introduce ourselves, my name is Uzumaki Naruto, 
said the boy holding out his hand. Come on. My name is Glitch Eyes, but my real name is Jellel," said the still unconscious guy and shook the outstretched hand. Why are they all sleeping? Asked Naruto. When I come to the guild, I cast a sleep spell on everyone, and when I leave, I remove it, but it does not affect magicians equal to or superior to me in strength. The guy answered, and at that time Naruto was talking to the fox, mentally. Karama. Why do I feel him differently than everyone else? Asked Naruto. Well, I have only one guess, it seems to me that he is from another world, parallel to this one," Kurama replied. I see, now we will check it," Naruto said thoughtfully. Jellal, tell me, are you from another world? The boy asked his question. How did you know? The guy's jaw met the floor, and his eyes became five kopecks after Naruto's statement. You see, I feel you differently than everyone else in this guild," explained his statement boy. I see, yes that's true, I'm from a world called Edelus. It's parallel to this. In that world, unlike this one, there are problems with magic and therefore the king created a spell that absorbs magic from this world, namely, absorbs people who possess magical powers. This spell opens portals, but I walk around the world and close them so that there are no casualties among people. Glitchy eye told everything without concealment. Okay, it's time for me to go on a mission, said Glitch eye approaching the stand with tasks and taking one from there. Bye, said Naruto. As soon as Glitch Eyes left the guild and disappeared, everyone began to awaken. Damn, Glitch Eyes came again. Gray began to speak. Can't he come in without a spell? Natsu said. Naruto ran away while everyone was waking up because he didn't want to waste time with Natsu. The boy really wanted to start training with the sword, but the pink-haired one would have delayed him. At the training ground, Guild training ground, Kurama, how are you going to train me? Asked Naruto. You give me partial control over your body, and I will reproduce everything. This way the training will go much faster, and at the moment we will play on the body's memory, Kurama said. How is that? The boy asked, not quite understanding what said the fox. Everything is simple here, I will do all the stances and techniques, and your body will just have to remember. Okay, here you go. Naruto answered and partially gave control of his body to Kurama. For an hour, Naruto, under the control of the fox, danced with a sword, and there was no other way to call it. His movements were as smooth as water, but also as elusive as the wind, and if there was an opponent in front of him, he would be dead. Cool. What is this style called? Naruto asked Kurama. Well, the name of this style corresponds to its status, Dance of the Fallen Angel. This style is both beautiful and merciless," answered the fox. Beautiful name. Said the boy. Yeah, now let's use energy in this style, otherwise you'll be able to defeat an ordinary swordsman, but not a magician swordsman. Moreover, I showed you only the simplest movements. You also need to get used to it, use energy right away, otherwise after that it will be very difficult," Kurama said. Okay, do you know any style with two swords? Asked Naruto. Of course, but you need to master at least this first. Answered the fox. Well, that's it, let's get started, release the energy. Said fox Naruto obeyed and fired energy at the sword, and then something happened that neither the fox nor Naruto expected, but it was in the mental channel that the voice appeared. Hello owner, my name is Morton. A voice introduced itself. Can swords talk? Asked Naruto. Not all, but only those in which the soul is contained explained the sword. I understand, but this was not written in the manuscript. The boy began to reason, but the fox saved him from brainstorming. Naruto, do you remember that the manuscript was damaged and most likely all the other information on the sword was there? Kurama said. Yes, most likely, Naruto answered. Okay, Morton will tell you about yourself later, but now let's train. Naruto said as he channeled magical energy into the sword. As you wish. Master. Morton replied. The sword glowed silver. And Naruto, under the guidance of Kurama, began to hone his movements again. This time, Naruto's dance became even more beautiful. After each swing of the sword, a beautiful trail of energy remained, and silvery waves sometimes flew off the blade. An hour later, Kurama decided to end his training. Okay. Naruto we'll finish for today, Kurama said. Okay. Kurama, would you like to go out and get some fresh air? 
asked Naruto. But someone is watching us, Kurama said. Don't be afraid, I know who it is, the boy answered. So that I, the nine-tailed fox, was afraid of something. The fox began to wind up his organ. Yes, yes, are you going to go out? Asked Naruto. Of course, the fox said and began to materialize in front of the boy. Myrus Pav. In the morning I came to the guild with my brother and sister. Everything was as usual. Natsu rushed at Naruto again. Naruto is a boy who came to the guild three years ago and I was quite surprised by him, because at first he seemed to me not a very strong magician, but I realized how mistaken she was when he and Lexus fought in a training match, which was intended to test his strength. Then, he fought on equal terms with Lexus, who was the third most powerful, after the master and guild arts. Well, as usual, I started arguing with the tin can and, accordingly, things were heading towards a fight, but suddenly we began to feel sleepy, I realized that glitch eyes had come. When I woke up, I saw that Naruto was no longer in the guild, and Natsu was yelling about it. And yet, the fight between me and Elsa took place and again it was a draw, I was so tired of it, I decided to go practice so that next time I could definitely beat Elsa. And so, while I was looking for a suitable clearing to train, I came across him training. Naruto was in the clearing, he was practicing with a sword, but I would say that he was dancing with it. After about half an hour, he stopped and began to think about something, but about two minutes passed and he nodded to himself started dancing again. This spectacle was much more mesmerizing than the previous one, because now after each swing a silver trail of energy remained. About an hour passed and then the last swing and Naruto stopped exercising. He just stood there, but a minute later some kind of animal began to appear in front of him, and the boy himself began to settle down on the grass. But what surprised me most was that he began to talk with this beast, or rather the nine-tailed fox, and snippets of their conversation reached me. They were going to call someone, Mira come out, I know you're here, Naruto said. End of Myra's Pav. Ku, do you think he can still call her, otherwise he won't realize that we noticed her? Asked Naruto. A. Okay, call me. Kurama replied. Mira come out, I know you're here, Naruto said and a girl came out from behind the tree. Well, what did you want? Asked Naruto. Where did you learn to wield a sword like that? The girl asked point blank. I don't know how to wield a sword. Naruto answered in all seriousness. But then, where do these movements come from? Asked Mira. Well, this is for Kurama, the boy answered calmly, closing his eyes. To whom? The girl asked. To me. The fox answered for Naruto. Who are you exactly? Mira asked Kurama brazenly, at which he bared his teeth. I am the keeper of this blockhead, answered the fox. How did you teach him? I decided to politely ask Mira, realizing that the creature opposite her was very old and strong. Well, Naruto can give me control over his body so all his movements were almost perfect. Kurama began to answer the girl's questions. Within an hour, while Naruto was dozing, Mira managed to talk to the fox about a lot and learn a lot but she did not learn specific information about the boy himself from the fox, as if he wanted to, he would tell him. Kurama. Why are you telling me all this? The girl asked. Because you are Naruto's friend, and you are also not indifferent to him, but know this, girl, anyone who tries to harm Naruto will be killed by me, said the fox. When she said that the boy was not indifferent to her, the girl blushed a little. Mira also noticed in herself a sympathy for this subject but attributed it to the fact that it was admiration for his strength, etc. From Kurama's words, she realized that she also experiences positive emotions when she's but after around Naruto. A week has passed. During this time, Kurama managed to train Naruto quite well in wielding a sword and now he was making more or less confident movements, without the help of the fox. Not infrequently, Mira also joined their training, and was able to establish good relations with these two, meaning Naruto and Kurama. And after the past week, the master collected them for some reason, but everyone guessed why and therefore were impatient. So, kids, you can probably guess why I gathered you here. Makarov asked, and a rumble began in the hall at his words. I announce the candidates who will take the exam for the title of senior wizard. The old man continued. This year, the exam will be taken by Uzumaki Naruto, Mira Jane Strauss, Freed Justin, Herringbone, Bucklow, 
Elsa Elia and Kena Alberona. Named members, you are allowed to choose one guild member as your partner, but they cannot be S-class mages. The exam will take place on the Sky Wolf Island. Members, you must arrive at the port of Hargent in three days. That's all. Rest. Said the master. Cool, Naruto, who will you take as your partner? Can it be me? Natsu asked the gray-haired boy. No, I already have a partner, Natsu. Naruto answered. When did you manage to find him? Asked the pink-haired one. Just now, the gray-haired man answered, and Natsu beamed. So, then it will be me. Natsu exclaimed. No, it will be me, a voice answered for Naruto. Suddenly everyone felt the release of enormous magical power, which was comparable to the power of dragons. Natsu at first thought that there was a dragon somewhere nearby, but when he saw the creature that appeared near Naruto, he noted that it was from him that this power was wafting. When everyone turned their heads towards the creature that had appeared, they noticed that a fox with nine tails was standing next to Naruto, grinning. The fox was yellow, streaked with silver, but there were also black lines running through the fur, and there was a guild mark on its back. Hide your magical energy, otherwise you know how people react to it, Naruto asked. Okay. The fox answered and the pressure disappeared, and all eyes from Kurama were transferred to the boy. Naruto, who is this? Natsu asked, looking at the fox. This is my partner, as well as friend and guardian, Kurama. Naruto answered smiling, because the fox had such an effect on everyone that some still have their eyes in place didn't get up. The keeper? Why do you need a guardian, who is already so strong? Gray asked. Let's just say it's my family's secret, said a grinning Naruto. And at this time Mira approached the fox. Hello Kurama, the girl greeted the fox. Hello to you too, girl, Kurama replied, but then Lisanna came to her senses and rushed to the fox screaming. How cute! Lisanna screamed, and the fox's eyes nearly popped out of his head from this. Naruto, save me! The fox asked, and Naruto only nodded to this request. Lisanna, let go of Kurama, otherwise I need him alive, Naruto said. Okay. The girl walked away from the fox, offended by Naruto. Damn. I want to watch the exam too, Natsu began to say. Then become my partner, Natsu, Mira said, approaching the boy. Cool. I agree. Natsu started screaming. Elsa, seeing that her rival had decided on a partner, namely Natsu, decided. Gray, you will be my partner. Said Elsa. Okay, I won't lose the firebrand and Mira to you, Gray said. What did you say, General of Panties? Natsu started the fight. What did the narrow-eyed one hear? Gray answered and a fight began. Naruto, let's go get ready. Said the fox. Yeah, Naruto answered, heading towards the door. All participants and their partners also decided to go prepare. After three days. Hargent Port. Well, kids, are you all ready? The master asked, and a discordant, yes, was heard from the participants. Get on the ship, we're leaving. The master shouted. On the ship. Naruto immediately cast a spell to stop him from getting seasick. As the ship began to move, the boy noticed that Natsu ran towards the side of the ship with a green face. Naruto decided to approach him. Natsu, you also can't stand transport? Naruto asked sympathetically. Yeah, I always feel sick on any type of transport, but do you get motion sickness too? Asked Natsu. Yeah, but seeing you, I'm starting to think that all dragon slayers hate transport. Naruto said. How are you not feeling seasick now? Asked the pink-haired one. I cast a writing spell on myself, should I cast it on you? Asked the boy. Yeah. BWA, Natsu answered and bent overboard again. Naruto cast a spell on Natsu and the pink-haired came to life again. I'm alive again. Thank you. Natsu thanked the gray-haired man. The voyage lasted three hours, but when the island appeared, the master spoke. Listen. There will be seven paths open on the island. Two roads can lead you to battle with S-class magicians. These will be places of fierce battle. The next four can take four teams of magicians into two battlefields, you will have to fight the enemy, and the last road leads to a safe path. There are only seven roads, now hurry up and choose your path. The master announced. Everyone rushed off the ship. 
Naruto used gravity to fly towards the island. When he arrived at the shore, and he was the first, he saw seven paths, labeled with the letters A to G. Naruto chose path E and followed it. The boy walked for a couple of minutes in pitch darkness, and finally there was light at the end of the tunnel. Naruto walked out into the large hall. Fireflies flew around the room and they illuminated the figure. It was Gildarts. Damn, I was unlucky, I didn't want to fight at all today, said Naruto. But on the contrary, I was lucky. I have long wanted to test your strength and see how close you were to my level, Gildarts said, smiling. Eh, hey, well, what a fight, so a fight. Naruto said and began to release magical power, and after him, Gildarts began to do the same. On other paths, paths A and C battle. Mira and Natsu stood opposite Christmas tree in Macau. The battle has begun. Path B, fierce battle. Bucklow and Jet versus Lexus. The battle has begun paths D and G battle. Elsa and Grey versus Kana and Wakaba. Path F silence. Fried and Elfman go without fighting. Suddenly a huge magic force. A, it looks like they met said the master, sitting at the exit from the tracks. Path V Dam. I wanted to meet Naruto and see how much stronger he and I have become. Lexus sighed, looking at the defeated Bucklow and Jet. Mira and the Christmas tree interrupted the fight. So those who are better off not meeting have met, said Mira, because unlike the entire guild, except for the master, she knew Naruto's current level of strength. I agree with you here, said Yola, Elsa and Kana also decided to take a break to comment. Looks like the path that Naruto and Gildarts use as a battlefield can be closed. Elsa expressed her opinion. Fuck. Naruto is strong, very strong, said Wakaba. Freed and Elfman walked quietly and were glad that they would not encounter anyone, namely Naruto or Gildarts and Lexus, as opponents. Naruto and Gildarts began the battle, or rather, they launched a spell, but Naruto was a little weaker than Gildarts, but only a little. Seeing that the spells were not working well on both of them, Naruto came up with a plan. Gildarts, I'm tired of fighting, Naruto shouted. Well, then give up, the man answered. I have a proposal, Naruto said, stopping another strike from Gildarts. Which? The man asked. That's it. Naruto shouted and ten barrels of wine appeared in the hall. I offer you a competition. Whoever drinks the most wins, Naruto said. But you can't, you're small, Gildarts shouted. Who told you that you were competing with me, don't forget I have a partner, Naruto said. Karama, come out, the boy called the fox. Okay, then I agree, said Gildarts. Everyone felt that the bursts of magical energy had ended and therefore decided that the fight was over. Half an hour later, the passing participants left their paths. Everyone had a look of surprise on their faces, because Naruto brought Gildarts, who was drunk and drunk, with him. What happened there? Asked the master. We started fighting, but then I suggested to Gildarts that we finish, began the exam more peacefully. Naruto's story. By the end of the story, everyone was lying on the ground and holding their stomachs, including the master. Well, now I announce the second part of the exam. You must find the tomb of the founder master. Who is first if he gets to her, he will pass the exam. Let's start. The master shouted. All the remaining magicians ran to look for the purpose of this task. Naruto wanted to concentrate and search for magical power the way even a dead magician emits energy, but he was hampered by the huge monsters that attacked the boy, and he had to throw them away. Naruto knew that Kurama was not a helper now as he was lying drunk in his subconscious, but then he was distracted by the voice of the sword. Master, if you want. I will find her, said the sword. Come on, can you do it? Naruto asked, fighting off another beast. Yes, the sword answered briefly. Then look, Naruto said. Five minutes later Morton said, Master, I found this place, said the sword. Where should I go? Asked Naruto. You need to go in the opposite direction, Morton answered. Okay. Naruto answered and turned around and ran to the exits from the tracks. Having reached the exit from the tracks, Naruto asked. Where to go? Asked the boy. On the path where you fought, the sword answered. Naruto ran again, but before the boy could reach the hall, the sword stopped him. Wait. The owner of the passage to the right place is behind that stone. Morton said when Naruto stopped. 
Okay. Naruto replied and headed in the direction indicated by the sword. When the boy came out of the tunnel, he saw a bright place in the roots of a tree, which formed, as it were, a roof. Beneath them was a grave, it was white and strewn with gold patterns, and a master sat next to it. Makarov, noticing that someone had arrived, stood up and walked towards the newcomer. Naruto, you did it, and now it's time to finish the exam, Makarov said and launched a yellow rocket into the air, it meant the end of the exam. Everyone gathered near the camp, which was set up for those who failed the exam, as well as for S-class magicians. So, today there is one more senior wizard in our guild, namely Uzumaki Naruto, now he is the youngest S-class magician in our guild. The old man began speaking. From the side, Naruto was showered with congratulations, as well as approving glances, but there was also one sad one, it was from Kana, that directed, it was not at Naruto, but at guild arts. And now we all board the ship and go home. The old man shouted. In the guild, on the occasion of the appearance of a new senior wizard, they threw a party, or rather a celebration, but this time there were much more of all the usual things for the guild. But only two were sad, namely Lexus and Kana. One was thinking about how he couldn't fight Naruto, and the other was on her own wavelength. <laughs>